Welcome back to Echo Trade. It's Jeff Roth. Today we have a portfolio update coming to us from Ted Grossbeck from Grossbeck Investment Management. And we're talking about their growth of income portfolio available on Echo Trade. So we're going to kind of get a recap of the year and, and any position changes, any kind of changes they made to the portfolio, as well as kind of looking forward to what to expect in 2024. So let's jump in with Ted. Hey, Ted, good to see you. How are you doing? Uh, good afternoon, Jeff. Good to see you, too. Yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas. So it's, uh, it's that you. time you of the year. Happy holidays up. and happy new year. Yeah. We're coming up on the end of the year. So so I want to kind of get a recap from you on, on the growth of income portfolio. Kind of what have we seen so far this year? You know, how has the portfolio kind of, you know, performed, you know, relative to the overall market where it's been very concentrated kind of growth, but also just kind of, you know, relative to uh, to kind of you know comparable portfolios in the dividend space, kind of give us a, a recap of the year and kind of how things are looking so far. Certainly, uh, I'll talk about performance right now. Through November, uh, the portfolio is up about seven percent in the month, which is actually a very good return after we've had several quarters of or several months of negative returns. Year to date, the portfolio is up six percent. Um, now, of course, that doesn't compare as well as the S&P 500, where we see it has really uh, gone very high and has really been driven by a very narrow few stocks. Usually those are the Magnificent Seven you might have heard about in the news. Um, but our portfolio has still done um, pretty well. When we look at uh, our portfolio, which is, again, a growth of income portfolio, and it's a dividend-oriented portfolio, when I benchmark that against the S&P 500 dividend aristocrats, we're actually doing quite well. We're our 7% return was in line with what uh, that index performed for the month. And again, as I mentioned earlier, our year-to-date performance was up 6%. And the year-to-date performance for the dividend achiever index is up about 3%. So we're actually on a year-to-date basis, you know, outperforming uh, quite well against the uh, S&P uh, dividend aristocrats index. Uh, again, that's also very similar to our strategy where it invests in, you know, portfolio of rising dividends and companies that have always increased their dividends each and every year. Um, in terms of valuation, valuation of our portfolio has also uh, been fairly competitive. Uh, right now, the uh, PE, the current PE of the portfolio is 21 times, and the current PE of the S&P dividend aristocrats is 24 times. Um, when I also look at year-to-date, uh, our portfolio is also has a forward PE of 18 times. That compares favorably with about a 17 PE for the projected PE for the dividend aristocrats. So we're about in line with the valuation metrics, you know, for you know fellow dividend investors as ourselves. Um, so our performance has been um, quite well. Valuation is again in line, a little bit better on some metrics. Uh, PE, the average PE across our portfolio for the stocks is about 2.7%, and that is about in line with the 2.7% yield for the um, dividend aristocrats index. So I'd like to say, you know, we've been doing um, quite well. I've uh, been happy with the performance. We just finished up the uh, third quarter earnings reports, and again, most of our companies all had good things to say. The earnings were in line with expectations, a little bit ahead of what the street expectation was. Uh, so, again, the portfolio has reacted uh, positively to this. We've seen the, the move up most recently. No, it's fantastic. Like you said, I mean, you're outperforming in terms of kind of, you know, within within your sphere of influence, you know, in, 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 the, in the portfolio is similar to uh, to the growth of income portfolio. You know, not many are, are kind of looking towards, you know, the S&P overall, because, again, it's been driven by so few uh, companies, at least in, you know, kind of the, the, the broader portion of 2023. So so talk about kind of what have been the drivers for the portfolio this year and kind of if, if you've made any adjustments recently and within the portfolio. Well, Lodge, I'd say that the biggest thing that's been benefiting us has been the um, change in outlook. As we recall earlier in this year, you know, we were very dour. We were all talking about an imminent recession. Uh, we also had been dealing with very high inflation, the highest that we had seen in quite a number of years. We obviously saw the Federal Reserve react to that with a very aggressive interest rate hiking campaign. That always has a very negative effect on dividend stocks and, you know, in our portfolio, especially a lot of the um, financial areas, more cyclical areas. They're going to take a bit of a bigger hit on the 
uh, fears of rising interest rates. Now, obviously, we've seen a little bit of a sea change in sentiment. Obviously, now that the Fed has taken its foot off the brake and has now indicated that they're pretty much done with the rate hikes. And already, I guess the market is already anticipating that there might even be some rate cuts coming in the next year, uh, as well as the Goldilocks uh, performance measures that we've been seeing on the economics reports really indicates that we've seen a, a cooling inflation rate. Uh, we've still seen a very strong economy. In fact, the last quarter's GDP report was tremendously strong. Um, so I think the outlook too from our companies has pretty much been state of course. I think some of their outlook is a little bit brightened since they were also talking about imminent recessions, difficult economic conditions. And I think some of that uh, commentary has started to ease a little bit where I think they're starting to see that they should have, you know, good earnings expectations coming into the new year. Our portfolio companies are probably looking for a mid single digit increase in earnings. So at least, you know, we're still looking to see positive earnings. So that really, again, takes away some of that recession fear or the fear that, you know, earnings, you know, won't fall for the company. So again, I think that outlook has really filtered through the portfolio. In fact, we've seen, you know, the Santa Claus rally has really come through. Um, I guess it hit a little bit early in the month of November with that big return, but we've also still continued to see, you know, good returns in the last couple of weeks into early December. Uh, right now we're looking at probably being up about close to 11% for the total quarter, and we're probably close to about 15% on a year-to-date basis, and that's just through, you know, yesterday, uh, through the most recent close of the stock market. So we are even seeing an even better rally. So hopefully we'll finish the year really on a very strong note, some very strong performance. Um, and uh, I think we are going to have a very good uh, year coming next year as well in terms of returns for the portfolio. That's what everybody wants to hear. Yeah. And that's what I've been hearing too. I think the consensus is, is in agreement that, you know, there's reason for optimism and sentiment is kind of definitely improving um, in the last handful of months. So, so with those changes, you know, recently, have you guys made any updates to the portfolio? Yes. Uh, we just most recently bought into a company called United Rentals. Uh, it's a company that we have actually owned on the um, growth side of our business. Um, they just recently initiated a dividend. The uh, company has been a very strong grower, uh, very upper teens to almost 20% on the top line. Uh, the bottom line has also uh, followed suit with about a 20% plus growth rate in earnings over the last several years. Uh, so we really have you know, a positive outlook for this company. Uh, rents uh, equipment out to a lot of the industrial companies. So again, as the Industrial economy seems to be looking pretty good uh, with the strong economic indicators. Uh, you know, we really liked United Rentals. The valuation was quite compelling. Uh, it was about 11 times on our adjusted earnings, so it really comes in a very um, reasonable PE. Uh, its gap P is about 17 times, and even that is still fairly attractive when you compare that against, you know, the dividend indexes as well as the S&P 500. So we are getting, you know, a very good dividend grower at a very good valuation. Uh, albeit it has a very low yield since it just initiated uh, its dividend, but the payout ratio is quite low. Uh, the earnings outlook is very promising when you have a very strong outlook with a very low payout ratio. That really tends to uh, portend some very good dividend increases from the company. That's fantastic. So, so like you said, you know, if you want to recap in terms of what we can expect for, for next year, in terms of you know where we're standing right now, it sounds like there's reason for optimism, and, and and you have you know the numbers that you're looking at. It could be you know it was a strong 2023, you know, especially comparatively relative to to the other benchmarks that you guys are setting yourself up against. But what is the expectation for 2024? It sounds like we uh, we're in for a good year potentially. Yes, I really uh, I'm really optimistic for the coming year. Awesome. Well, that's what we love to hear. Appreciate the time, Ted, and hope you have a wonderful Christmas and happy holidays and, and a fantastic 2024 New Year. You too, Jeff. Happy New Year.